Hey, welcome back to the Bad Timing Club. Uh, today we're going to be working on the engine. Last episode we got it torn down and today we're going to start cleaning it up. We got a bunch of parts in so we're going to start reassembling and hopefully get this thing rolling soon. So now that we have the block completely disassembled, we are scrubbing it with some hot soapy water. We'd scraped off all the thick gunk that was left behind and now it's just a matter of getting the metal clean enough that after assembly we can paint it. So we're using Dawn dish soap and warm water just so that there's no bad chemicals. We're not trying to be breathing in a bunch of brake clean or something like that. And it seems to be working pretty well. To help your engine grow, be sure to water it three times a day. All right, so we've got the head gasket all scraped off. It's looking pretty shiny, so put, I sprayed some oil on it. But we need to clean it down a little bit more. You can still see the remains of where the head gasket was. So what we're gonna do is just take a piece of sandpaper and level it out with that. So we got some high quality, wet, dry, 400 grit paper here. I'm gonna spray this with a bit of oil as well. And then we've got a piece of glass here, 10 pounds of weights. And then because this is glass that I cut myself, I would definitely be wearing some gloves. And then it's just a matter of back and forth. Because this engine has seen such a short amount of use, uh, I'm pretty confident that it's going to be fairly flat. And then, we're really just cleaning up the surface to prep it for a new gasket. We're not trying to level out a warp block or anything like that. Obviously, there is a place for the machine shop, but we kind of ran out of the budget for this project long ago, so. So after a couple of minutes of sanding with the setup we had, uh, it looks pretty good. It's all fresh metal, it's all smooth. If there are any high spots left, they just got taken down. Um, you can hardly see what was left of the like imprints and the casting from the old gasket. So I think this should do. So the next hack job machining process we're doing is honing out the cylinder bores. So we've got the old Harbor Freight cylinder hone on the drill and trying to get a 45 degree cross hatch going in here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. You can see there's a nice cross hatch pattern in there now. And you know, compare it to one of the other cylinders, see how shiny that looks and it's just smooth from the piston riding up and down in it, it's kind of burnished the edges. But we want to start out with this almost rough pattern so that um, when we put the new rings in, they can seat properly, so they will end up wearing down the high spots and they'll kind of wear in together. And then these screws will actually fill with oil and that'll help keep the cylinder wall lubricated. So a lot more to go. And then we can do more cleaning. Face getting ready to paint the uh, oil pan over here. A lot of cleaning out oil, as you'd expect to find in an oil pan. All right, so we've got all the bores um, honed out and they're all cleaned up a bit and then coated with some oil. The next thing I'm working on now is getting the camshaft bearings installed. That's one of those things that I just figured was normal to do and then you go on the internet and everybody sends their engine to the machine shop to have the bearings installed and removed. So I got a slide hammer puller and managed to get all the bearings out pretty easily. No big deal there. And now I'm gonna figure out installation. It looks like they just press in, so we'll figure something out to do that properly. But that's what's next. And then we're ready to start really cleaning everything up and getting ready to put the crankshaft in, I think. Um, so I believe we want to do crankshaft and then pistons. So yeah, we'll figure it out. Pistons are going to be quite the project. That's another one of those things that seems like everybody sends to the machine shop. So I got to. Got to figure out what the machine shop does and how we can do it at home. 
without buying really expensive machines because that's not in the budget today, unfortunately. All right, so this one, um, it pushed in all the way. We're flush with the block now. And if you look through the oil hole, which you probably won't be able to see, but it lines up with the slot. So this bearing is good. We don't have to do anything further with that rubber bushing to try and get it in the last couple millimeters. And we'll just check all of them to make sure. Yeah, so this one here needs to go a little further. So we'll deal with that. But otherwise we're almost done and ready to install more fun stuff. Yay cool. fun. Yeah, yay fun. You always gotta keep some scrap stock on hand because you never know when it's gonna come in handy. So we got the new bearings installed and lubed up with the assembly lube. So it's a very tacky oil. It's like, yeah, it's almost like maple syrup. And you know, this has zinc, molly, and other high pressure additives for maximum protection during break-in. But really this is just a very sticky oil so it'll stay in place so that when we go to start up the engine, it's not dried out. Because that would not be good. I'm gonna be back here doing this all over again. Which would be really sad. So, next up, we're gonna drop the crankshaft in. According to the Molly website, 12% um, of engine bearing failure is due to improper assembly. So, as long as we can beat that 12%, then we should be good. Yeah, I don't know. Let's do it. Look at the crank. Maybe we should just do part part unboxing videos. I love engine parts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tell me that like five year old you would not have wanted to see engine parts come out of boxes. Let's go. The crank in very gently. Fingers. Who needs them? Okay. There's a crank. Is it cranky? Um, if this doesn't work, I'm going to be. Some more assembly lube on here. All right, so we've got um, bearings installed in the bearing cap. So this is number one. There's an arrow pointing forward, so that points in the appropriate direction. And then, I guess we just drop it in. Hope that everything lines up and then we did it all right. So once we get all the caps on, then we can go and start torquing them down. Uh, there's a specific procedure for torquing. It's like, you know, 75, 90, 100 foot pounds or something like that. So we'll just work our way along. Oh, we got the rear main seal installed as well on the back. The instructions were very vague about which way around this seal goes. It said with the lip facing forward, and there's lips on all sides, so best guess, 50-50 chance we'll be pulling out the engine again. All right, so we've got the last bearing cap going in now. That'll be it on the crankshaft until we realize we did something wrong and have to take it back apart, as you do. <laughs> I really hope we don't have to pull the engine again. Zach is currently tightening the bolts to spec. 
100 foot pounds is kind of a lot. The engine stand at least. Yeah. <laughs> We've been kind of worried about this thing since the beginning. But. So I guess what we're supposed to do is get a pry bar and pry on the stuff to tighten it. That is weird. We pry the crank forward. Like, push the crank. Maybe we should make some workout videos, but that are engine specific. <laughs> This? Do we need this? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's all for today guys. We got a lot of cleaning done. We got the crank installed and the bearings. Next up we're going to be doing the pistons. <laughs> we have a lot of new parts coming in the mail and Poppy is also in the room. <laughs> we have a lot more content coming your way so be sure to like and subscribe if you want to follow along.